Yeah, we can continue. So now, a little part from the theory. The intermediate value theorem. It's a, an important theorem. So this theorem says that if we have a continuous function on the closed and bounded interval, then if we take some number between f of a and f of d, then there is some x0 such that the value of our function at x0 is c. And uh, the illustration of this theorem is given here on this graph. So if we take some f of b and f of a, then between a and b, we will have some x0 such that f of x0 will be c. Do you know this theorem from your lectures? Um, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So, as for the application of the theorem, uh, I think that it is it is applicable in uh, the numerical simulation. For example, you see we have we have an equation which is two point one. And the question is do we have a solution to this equation in the interval two comma three? So maybe by the numerical methods you can try to find the solution, but at least if I take the another interval. And I will ask the same question. Maybe the answer will be no, no. So in order to estimate, to estimate, uh, I say our hopes to find the solution to this equation in the interval, in the corresponding interval, we can use this, this intermedi intermediate value theorem. You see, maybe if I take another interval, it will be not so evident, even if I will take an interval which contains this root. But for some values, you can say that, yes, as for this interval, we have a root. So, to, <clears throat> to explain this exercise, we take our function, which is a polynomial of, of the order 3, then this function is a continuous function. I hope that the usual functions, you know this from your lectures, so this function is continuous. Then, let's calculate the values 
of this function at x equals 2 and x equals 3. In this case, in this case, you see that f of 2 is minus 11 and uh, f of 3 is 12. So you see, if you take another interval, maybe you will have that f of some point which is different from 3 will be also <coughs> negative. So as for this interval, you will not have the root of your cubic equation. But in this case, in this case, you will have, you have that f of 2 is negative and f of 3 is positive. Then it is clear that 0 is between f of 2 and f of 3. And then, and then by this theorem, we can say that there exists a number c in this interval such that f of c is zero. That is, c is the solution of this cubic equation. Is it clear? Professor is clear. Yeah. Yeah. So the second, the second, the second equation of this type, you see, uh, we have a rather sophisticated equation, x to the power one thousand plus one thousand one thousand x minus one equals zero. So the question: Can we find? E, uh, can we find the solution of this equation? So we want to show that the equation 2.2 has a root. So as in the previous case, we put, we define our function f of x as x to the power 1000 plus 1000 x minus 1. This function is polynomial and then it is a continuous function. Then you see it's our imagination. If I take f of 0, f of 0, then it is clear that f of 0 is minus 1. Agree? Yes, I agree. So, yes. you see, you see, you see, if I take f of 1, I will obtain something like 1,000. Yes? So, in this case, you see, Valentina. If I take f of 2, I will obtain something positive also. You see? Yes. So, the, uh, here, here, uh, the main, the main, the important thing that I have the value 0 where my function is negative. And another point, another point, one where my function is positive. Then, as in the previous exercise, we have that zero is between f of zero and f of one. Then, we can say that there exists a real number c from the interval 0, 1, 
such that f of c is zero. So at least, at least we have a solution of this equation in the interval zero one. Is it clear? Yeah, it's clear. Clear. Good. So the next the next point of our of our talk of our seminar is the so-called discontinuous function. So we have we have some ideas about continuous function, but we have also to study the discontinuous one. You see, as for the continuous function, here you have a graph where if I take if I take my point A, then I will have the value of my function y equals f of x, which is f of a or y of a, same thing. So the other another situation we have if our function is not continuous. So as for the definition, we say that if our function is not continuous, then we say that this function is discontinuous at this point. So you have you have in this slide some kind some kinds of discontinuities the first and the second one first of all the function has a discontinuity of the first kind at some point x equals a if there exists there exists left hand limit and right hand limit in addition this one side limits are finite you see then if we take the discontinuity of the first kind then maybe 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 the right hand limit and the left hand limit are equal are equal but but if we have a discontinuous function these limits are not f of a because for example this function can be not defined at the point a but the limits exist the one-sided limit exists. Then, then, in this case, we say that this point is called a removable discontinuity. This means that if I have a function which is not, for example, defined at some point A, or it is defined by another value at this point we can we can redefine our function by the value or the values of our left hand and right hand limits at this point and then we will obtain we will obtain a continuous function it will be a new function, but the difference between the initial and this one will be only at one point, or maybe three points, I don't know. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. Valentina, is it clear? 
Yes, it's clear. Mikael. Yes, clear. Oña. Yes. 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 Then we have we have another situation when the right hand limit and left hand limit are different are different so in this case we say that our function f of x has a jump discontinuity we will see in the picture now this jump you see this function this function y of y equals f of x is defined is defined like this and as for the point as for the point a it is defined by this i i say this branch of my function because it is not defined by this part of my function you see here we have we have the situation when this function at the point A is defined by this part of my function. So we have this jump. This jump. Is it clear? Yes, it's yes, clear. clear. Yes. Clear. Now uh the second the second definition is as follows so the function is said to have a discontinued of the second kind non-removable or essential discontinuity if at least one of the one side limits either does not exist or is infinite so as for this situation, I will show you the graph of the corresponding function. So in this case, you can imagine you can imagine the function like one over a minus x. So if x is a, this function will be infinite agree yeah, i agree agree so this is this is a function which has which has the discontinuity of the second time then then we pass we pass to the exercises we pass to the exercises and after it will be the last exercise and then we can discuss we can discuss uh, you say homework and I have also another task to propose you so let us study let us study the continuity the C of the following sophisticated function, which is three, three to the power x over one minus x squared. So you see that this function is not defined as x equals plus or minus one. Then this function is discontinued for x minus one. Clear, I hope. So in order to determine the type of the discontinuities, let's try let's try to find the one sided limit. So as x as x plus two minus two minus 
1 minus 0. That is from the left. Then you can see that it will be 3 to the power minus 1 over minus 0. Agree? I agree. On yeah. Yes. D'accord? D'accord? Oui. Again. So, in this case, you see, you will have 3 to the power infinity plus infinity. Plus infinity. So, it will be infinity. Plus infinity. If you want. And the right hand limit and the same in the same way you can find that this limit is zero because it will be three to the power minus infinity that is the limit is zero conclusion as for the point x equals minus one you have that one of the one-sided limits is infinity. Is infinity. Then this point of discontinuity is of the second kind. Agree? I agree. Yeah, I agree. So the last slide, the last slide, uh, in a similar way, in a similar way, we can start it, we can start it, the one side limits at the point x equals one. So we take, first of all, the left hand limit and the right and limit. So, as in the previous case, the first limit will be infinity and the second limit will be zero. So, in this case, we have also, we have also the discontinuity of the second type or, uh, I repeat, an essential discontinuity. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. So, as for the homework, your questions now. The last one, we have to discuss the last one. Yes, the last one. The last one. So, you want to see the solution for the for this home task on internet. It's right. Yes, I want to know how. So how I have, I have to find, I have to find. It was. Uh, can you, can you recall me uh, the name of this exercise? Uh, One T. T. T three. I... Uh huh. Thirteen. Wait. I will show you the this exercise. Is it this one? Yeah. Yes. Good. So the solution. You see, as for this exercise, uh, you can, Valentina, you can, in fact. You can use the trigonometrical formulas in order to simplify your your functions, because here you you, uh, you see that it's sinus of seven pi x divided by sinus of two pi x. So you can you can rearrange your denominator in order to have something good 
something good, that is something like your sign as 2 pi x in the numerator. But there is another way. So change of variable. If I take a new variable, y, which is x minus 1, you see, in this case, in this case, why, uh, so a good question for this exercise or for all exercises of this type is why we have to apply this change of variables? Yes, it is a good question because, because finally, I want I want to make use to make use of the first remarkable limit. So something like sine s x over x. You see what is the number? So I want I want I want to simplify my function in order in order to have something when I can use this this limit. So if I take this change of variables, you see, I can rewrite my numerator in the following way. In order to have, in order to have minus sine of seven pi y. Are you agree with my formula? Yes. Really? Oh, yeah. Yes. Est-ce que c'est clair? Oui, c'est clair. Sinus de, etc. Mm -hmm. Tout simplement, uh, minus, minus sinus of 7 pi y. And the, exactly in the similar way, we rearrange, we rewrite our denominator in terms of the variable y, of the variable y. So as for the denominator, we will have sinus of 2y by so now, you see, our limit is, our limit is minus, minus limit as y goes to zero of sinus 7 pi y over sinus 2 pi y. Agree? But it's enough. Agree? Yes, it's like you you look the nominator and the nominator to simplify, and now you, you see, are. You see, you see, but it's enough, but it's enough. I have my change of variable, yes? Yes. Then, if I write my x, as, as a sum of 1 and y, then by the formulation of my problem, x goes to 1. This means that in this case, goes to 0 by this formula. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Agree. Then, using this formula for x, I can rewrite my sinus, my sinus 7 pi x as minus sinus of 7 pi y. 
Yes. But from the very beginning, x goes to one, and my numerator now goes to zero as y goes to zero. In this case, it is very near, very near the situation of the first remarkable limit. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes, I got it. So, same thing, same thing for the denominator. For the denominator, as for the denominator, we can rewrite this denominator in terms of the variable y. So, taking into account the sign of our numerator in terms of y, we rewrite our initial limit as minus minus limit as y goes to zero of sine seven pi y over sine two pi y. I hope now it's clear. Yes, it's clear. Clear. Then, then, you see, my idea is to use is to use the first remarkable limit. So, you see, I write, I write my sinus of seven pi y as sinus seven pi y, but divided by seven pi y. Mm -hmm. So I divide my sinus, but next I have to multiply. I have to multiply by this seven pi y in order to keep uh, the initial relation. You see? Nothing changed. I divide by seven pi y and I multiply by seven pi y. Mm -hmm. Agree? Okay, yeah. Yes. Now, now as for as for our denominator. So I write in the denominator sinus of two pi y. And in the numerator, I write 2 pi y. Yes? So, if you want this guy in the limit as y goes to 0, will be 1. But I have to divide, divide this by 2 by y. I keep this uh, the initial relation. I keep the initial relation. Agree? Yes. So the product, you see, the product of these four terms are, in fact, this one. This is this fraction. Agree? Oh, yeah, it's just a clear. Oui. Oui. Alors, Valentina, agree? Is it clear? 
Yes, it's clear. Now, you see, now, now. I have, I have the first job, which is seven or sinus seven pi y over seven pi y. I know the limit, the limit of this function u to the remarkable limit, the first remarkable limit. Then I have also, I also know the limit of this guy. It, it is also the first remarkable limit. And finally, finally, you see, you have seven pi y, divided by 2 pi y. And this limit is absolutely clear. It is 7 over 2. So, you see, our limit is a product of three limits. The first one, 7 over 2, and the second one. And Taking into account the sign, the sign in front of our limit, we will have minus seven over two. Yeah. Yes, I got it. Good. Very good. So we uh, also we have also no uh s4 s4 12 one t 12 as for this one can you can you can you find uh, this limit is it clear for you Valentina? Yes, for this is clear. Yeah, this is the last year. Yes. So now, if it is clear, I will close this file, file, and uh, and uh, I will send you a new exercise, a new exercise, and. It will be enough for today. Try to learn this theory for this colloquium. Okay? You will have 20, 25 minutes in addition in order to try to learn at least the formulations of the theorems. But it will be better to know also the proofs. You see, because really, really, this first block is is rather sad. It's rather sad. You see, so please try to excuse me, work. professor. Yeah. Uh, about uh, the. Um the test that we are going to have uh how is going to be the how to say like the procedure for because for example i know the theorems uh, but like for me it's complicated like to show you that i know like i can yes 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 say so, uh, for any x that what, belongs to your, the what, integral what's, what's your what's your name anthony anthony so uh, we will try to try. <laughs> we will try some <laughs> okay. some different some different situations. Okay. Maybe maybe uh, you write your okay. proof. You write uh -huh. your proof, and you send me the picture of. This. Perfect. Understood. And Thank you. You see. You see. And then then we can discuss with you because uh, you can copy from your textbook or from your lectures yeah. so you have to explain this not only to copy <laughs> the thing you see okay. Understood. Thank you. so 
if it will be good, then usually, you see, usually, I will ask what kind of mark, or I will propose a mark. If you agree, then it will be the final mark for this colloquium. If you are not agreed, then I will put you another question. I will ask you another question. You see, it's a procedure like this. As for the second colleague of mine, I don't know my method, and uh, I make use of this method always for Russian or international students. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good. So, if you agree, then you are free. If you are not agree, you will have another question. Maybe an exercise. But mainly, 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 you see, it is a theoretical part. It is a theoretical part. Uh, not uh, even a practical, or it is not an exercise, an exercise. But if if uh, if I think that it will be good to ask an exercise, I will ask. Just a moment, excuse me. Excuse me. So, Padi. Padi. Where is the question? Oh, we will see. So, now I will send you, I will send you another, another. On cast, not the phone cast, and if you want, we will also discuss this phone cast in two weeks. In this case, uh, yeah, sorry, professor. Um, Paddy, he is not in this class, he's in another group, but I think he wants to. If ask, uh, you see, if he wants, private. no problem. Yes. No problem. He can ask the questions, we can discuss, and so on, and so on. If he wants, no problems. But it is not a lecture, it is really a seminar. Uh, I have another question about the exam. Like there is eighteen theorems, and how you, we we are going to be able to choose which one we have we want to talk about, or you are going to give us. Yes, I will give you questions, uh, okay. and then uh, you will you will try to answer these questions. Okay. okay. So this this exercise, it is not for this week. So, after this week, after clock, try to do it. Okay? So, the, the clock is in the time of the class, yes? So, uh, the next... Valentina, what I propose, what I can propose, that we meet with you at 3 p.m. Yes? Yes. And then, I will give you to all the people of our class, to all the students of our class, I will give a question. You will have 30 minutes to prepare this question. Okay. And then at 3, at 15.30, as usually, we will start. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's right. Is it clear, the guys and the girls? Okay. 
Yes, it's, yeah, clear. it's clear. Yeah. So, so you have some at least thirty minutes to to prepare your your theorems and to uh, to learn your program, and then uh, I will see you on Friday next Friday, and uh, I I repeat that maybe maybe it will be not on Skype but on uh, Google Meet. In this case, uh, maybe we will we will speak with Eric on Thursday before before our club. Mm -hmm. Eric. Okay. So good. I yeah. will I will I, I will inform you about all the details one day before. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So, have a good day, if it is possible. And see you on Friday. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, professor. Have a great day. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Good day. Ciao, ciao.